Hello 2P and welcome to your next lesson on parabolas. Our topic today is on transformations of parabolas and our goal, I know how changes to the equation of a parabola will change the graph. So the type of parabola we're looking at here are ones that can be written in this form where there's just an x squared term and a constant term. And um, what this a and c represent are numbers that are missing. So if you take a look at the first group of them in this particular uh, question here, the a value is 2 and the, the c value is plus 4. Okay, so that's what the a and the c value mean. So we're going to see what happens when we change the a and the c value. So what I actually want you to do is to graph these things and see if you can answer this question. When the c value changes, the parabola does something. And we want to know what that something actually is. So I want you to put me on pause and graph those on the graphing calculator. And then when you think you know what the C values do, turn it back on and I'll go through it as well. So put me on pause. Did you pause me? If you did, welcome back. Uh, if you didn't, pause me and graph those functions and do some thinking. Okay, I'm going to actually graph those for you now. So I'm going to pull up my graphing calculator and I'm going to press y equals and we're going to enter x squared plus 4. x squared plus 4. And I'm going to press graph. Now that looks like a regular parabola. It opens up and it's up above the x-axis by, uh, it looks to be about four spaces. If I pull that in there, um, that gap in there looks like it's four spaces above. Okay, so it looks like that is um, four spaces above. So let's see what happens if I have x squared minus 2. So I'm going to go y equals and I'm going to graph x squared minus 2. And oh, there's our parabola again. It looks to be two spaces below the x-axis, um, which there's negative 2, two spaces below, positive 4 was four spaces above. What do you think is going to happen when I put a uh, plus 5 in there? Well, let's go back. Y equals, let's put plus 5. Graph. Oh, look at that. It is 5 spaces above. 5 spaces above. Okay, now try that again with the 2 out front. If you do exactly the same thing, hopefully you've already tried it, you'll see that the things on the end are moving that vertex, that turning point, up and down. So that tells us where that turning point is above or below the x-axis. So when the c value changes, the parabola moves up and down. And also notice that when we had, and I'll do a rough sketch over here, when we had a parabola like this that said uh, y equals x squared plus 4, that this value was at 4. So the c value, the c value, gives us the min, or it wouldn't matter if it was upside down, it would also give us the max value. So it gives us the maximum or minimum value. Okay, going down to the next bunch of them here, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to pause me, and I want you to graph these and see if you can complete these statements. When the a value changes, the parabola does what? When the a value is positive, what do we know about the parabola? And when the a value is negative, what do we know about the parabola? So put me on pause. Did you pause me? If not, go back and pause me. If so, we're going to take a look at this. So for the next one, I'm going to press y equals clear, and we'll put graph the following. Now this is for the a value. We did the c value first. Now we're comparing the a value. So what happens when I change the a value to 2, to 5, to 0.5? So 2x squared, 2x squared plus 4. Graph. Okay, that doesn't look a whole lot different than the other one that we had there um, that was just x squared plus 4. Let's have a look what happens if I graph 5x squared 
uh, plus 4. So I just changed that one value. It, oh, it got skinnier. And what about 0.5? I'm going to go down here and put uh, 0.5x squared plus 4. What's that going to happen? Oh, it got fatter. Okay, so it looks like the bigger the number, the skinnier the parabola. And if we start putting in fractions, we get a wide parabola. So I'm going to pull this in. So our a value, when the a value changes, the parabola changes shape. And the bigger the number, bigger the a value, the skinnier it gets. And the other way around, the smaller the a value, the wider or fatter it gets. Okay, the next thing says when the a value is positive or the a value is negative. Well, I haven't tried anything where they, we have a negative a value yet. We're gonna, we have to graph these ones to get our negative a values. So I'm going to pull up my calculator again. And I'm going to go in and I'm just going to insert a negative in front of all of these things. Insert negative and insert a negative. And what happens when I graph them this time? Oh, they're the same shape. They're just upside down. So when I changed all those A values to negative, I got a parabola that was upside down. So when the A value is positive, the parabola is uh, right side up. Uh, another way of saying that is it opens up. And if it opens up, it has a minimum value. So it has a minimum. And when the A value is negative, the parabola uh, is upside down. Or we can say it opens down. And it has a maximum value. So we can get a lot of information just by looking at those A and C values. So I'm going to take a look at a couple of questions here now. This says, what is the maximum or minimum value of Y equals 5X squared plus 2? Well, first of all, we know that the A value is positive. So that means it's right side up. So this parabola looks like that. And so it has a minimum value. So we know it has a minimum value because it's right side up. And we know that its minimum value is going to be the C value because it's been shifted up two spaces. So it has a minimum value of 2. What is the y-intercept of this thing? Well, since it hasn't gone left or right at all, the y-intercept is the same as the minimum value. It's still on that, uh, on that axis. So the y-intercept of this thing is c. It's the same as the minimum value. So y equals 2 is the y-intercept. Um, what are the x-intercepts? Now, this is interesting. We can graph it and find the x-intercepts, but they're actually not going to be very nice on the graph. So what I want you to recall uh, is, oh, and that should say negative 5x squared. Sorry about that. What are the x-intercepts of negative 5x squared plus 2? Um, incidentally, I know it should have been negative because up here, this is the rough sketch that we had of 5x squared plus 2, and it doesn't cross the x-axis at all. So it can't have any x-intercepts. So um, I really want to know what are the x-intercepts of negative 5x squared plus 2. Now, negative 5x squared plus 2 is going to have a maximum value at 2. So it's going to have an x-intercept here and an x-intercept here. But how do I figure that out? Well, here's how I figure that out. This line represents 
y equal to 0. So every time it crosses the x-axis, my y is 0. So what I'm going to do is stick 0 in for y. So it's going to say 0 equals 5x squared plus 2. Negative 5x squared plus 2. Drop that negative again. And now I have to rearrange this equation. I'm going to get x by itself. The first thing I'm going to do is add 5x squared to both sides. And if I add 5x squared to this side, I get 5x squared. And on this side, I just have 2. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And I get x equals 2 fifths is 0 0.4. And now um, that's x squared, so to get the value of x, I have to take the square root of 0 0.4. Now the square root of 0.4, if you punch it into your calculator, is 0 0.6 approximately. But every time you take the square root of a number, there's both a positive and a negative square root, always. And the reason for that is because negative 2 times negative 2 equals 4. So the square root of 4 could be negative 2, because I had to multiply negative 2 by itself to get 4. Or the square root of 4 could be 2 times 2, because 2 times 2 is equal to 4. And so there's always one of each. So what that tells me is that these two lines where that crosses are at negative 0 0.6 and positive 0 0.6. Those are the two x-intercepts. And that's the easiest way to get the x-intercepts for this one. Last class, you did x-intercepts for things that factored. Um, this class, uh, where those aren't factorable. So we can just rearrange to find them. A building that contains water pump equipment is shaped like a parabola. The height of the roof in meters can be given by this equation. Now, what do I know about this building? It's an upside-down parabola, because we've got a negative there. So I'm going to do a rough sketch of this building. And I also know that the top part of the building is going to be um, way up here at 18 because that's what this means. This is the max or min value. So the top part of the building is up at 18. And I can draw the parabola shape there. I don't know what these two things are, but I could probably find them easily. Okay, so and I know that this up here is 18. And I can do just this very rough sketch of the graph because I know what that parabola actually looks like. So it says where h is height in meters, and w is the horizontal distance from the building's center. So here's the building's center, and w tells us how far away we are from the building's center. Uh, what is the height? Oh, it says graph this relation. Uh, let's pull it on a graphing calculator. Um, let's go let's clear these out of here. Clear, clear, clear. And that is going to be negative. Uh, 0.45, up uh, 0 0.045, 0 0.045, um, I have to use x, not w, x squared plus 18. Uh, and when I graph that, eh, I'm not seeing it, so I'm going to have to change my window settings. I know my, my y's have to at least go up to 18, so I'm going to make them go up to 20. I know they have to go up to 18 because my rough sketch told me it was 18 high. So, and I'm guessing since it's really fat parabola, this is a really small number. So this is a really fat parabola. So it's going to be pretty wide. So I'm going to change my x's to be from negative 50 to positive 50. Negative 50. And graph it and see if I get it now. Oh, there it is. Okay, there's my parabola. So, and we know that this is 18 up here. I still don't know what these are. I could use the parabola to find, I could use the graphing calculator to find it, but I can also use the method that I did before, because this is how wide is the building at the ground. So I need to know what this distance in here is. So I'm going to find what those two points are, and then that'll help me find the distance in here. So I set h equal to 0, because at the ground, height is 0. Negative 0 0.045 w squared plus 18.
First thing I'm going to do is get the w squared on the other side. So I'm going to add 0.045 w squared to both sides. 0.045 w squared. So this side becomes 0.045 w squared equals 18. Now I have to divide both sides by 0.045. 0.045. And that tells me that w squared equals 400. And I have to take the square root of 400 to get w, because the opposite of squaring something is square rooting. So I take the square root of 400. And that tells me that w is plus or minus. Remember, there's both a positive and a negative, plus or minus 20. So this is negative 20 here. This is positive 20 here which means that this distance in here is going to be 40. So therefore, the building is 40 40 meters wide at the ground. And that actually concludes our lesson for today.